I'm Dr. Gloria Spall, and I have been commissioned with a message and a mandate to take ministry into marketplace, to take light into darkness, to educate, to empower, and to build people to build the kingdom. And the Bible reads, then Jesus, this is what I want you to bring your attention to. He went there and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan, somebody say Canaan, Canaan. came out of the same coast and cried unto him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. This means horribly afflicted by a demonic force that torments her. Uh, ooh. But he answered her, not a word. Somebody say silent. And his disciples came and besought him saying, send her away. For she crieth after us. Ha. And so it, in other words, they were saying, she's drawing too much attention to us with her crying out. She's, she's being a woman from Canaan is drawing too much negative attention to us by crying out to us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And this he's saying to the lady. And then came she and worshiped him. And it simply means that she came and bowed down before him and said, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it's not meat to take the children's bread and guest it to dogs. And she said, true, Lord, you're right. But even puppies get to eat the crumbs that fall from the prince table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. O woman, your faith is strong. Whatever you desire will be done for you. And at her, that very moment, her daughter was instantly set free from demonic torment. Hallelujah. God bless your word, God. Bless this your people. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He gave her what she wanted. But I want to leave you with this. He gave her First, silence, then refusal, then rebuke, and then reward. She, she went through the changes and the, and the process of this press of faith. And we've heard this story so many times as, as, a, as a citadel for the height of faith. The faith of a Gentile Canaanite. The woman that moved God. And there's so many titles that we've put to this scenario of faith that moves God. But I want to draw your attention to another element of this particular text. Because this woman, she, she, she got a blessing. She left with a blessing. But she didn't leave with him. She left with a blessing. Her child got what she wanted. But the scripture doesn't record that she left converted. She got a blessing, but she didn't get saved. And, and I want you to hear the, the, the crucial parts of this particular text. Because this is a time that we need to look at our salvation like never before. Somebody got blessed. But I think you didn't leave. And I'm not talking to anybody in particular. You, you know your own repertoire. You know your own resume. You know your own journal. Got what you wanted. But you didn't get saved. You didn't get that, re that relationship that's required to walk in a place with God. We have a, a vast number of people and I hear somebody say, well, it wasn't the time of the Gentiles. Yes, it was. She proved it. But it was by revelation. 
She got something that it Gentiles weren't supposed to get. But it was by revelation. Because she tapped into what Abraham knew. That all the nations of the earth would be blessed. I'll bless those that bless you. And I'll curse those that curse you. And through you all, not just the Jews. All the nations of the earth will be blessed. So she tapped into a revelation. She got blessed. But she didn't get saved. And I'm inviting you to check yourself in a way today like never before. Canaanite woman. She knew some stuff. She knew some stuff. She knew that revelation, you know, and she knew that he could do it. You know, a lot of people, and I like that little song, won't he do it? Yes, he will, said he would. Won't he, will he? <laughs> oh, only we can come up with won't he, will he? <laughs> Hallelujah. It could be a praise or a name, won't he, will he? <laughs> but, but the idea is that she knew he could do it. She knew that he could heal her daughter. Had no, had no doubt in her mind that he was able to accomplish the task. How many of you know he's a healer? Yeah. No, he's a burden bearer. He's a heart fixer, mind regulator. But are you saved? She knew he could do it. She had no doubt in her mind. And many times we give credit to people that just know his power to, for knowing him. Hallelujah. Uh, we give credit to people for relationship that know his power. Know that he can make a way out of no way. They've seen him stop things, turn things around in courtrooms and they've never been in a Bible study. They've seen him make marvelous moves in hospitals and never been to a prayer meeting. Uh, it's sometimes even the things that's done is the things that bring us into church. But you don't know him. And I'm afraid that we're in a world today where we're exemplifying the only prerequisite for being in Christ is to know his power. No, a thousand times no. She knew he could do it. She knew, she knew who he was. She called him son of David. My God, this woman knew history. There were some Jews that didn't even know that. They would have never called him son of David because number one, they didn't respect him as the Messiah. She recognized who he was. I'm just trying to show you how deep you can go and still don't get to the throne. See, 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 so God so loved the world. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't a prerequisite. God so loved to save people. God so loved the world that he gave so the world gets blessed she knew knew she knew the intricacies of the Jewish prerequisites for the Messiah that he would come liberating come in power she knew who she was she knew who she was she knew she was a Canaanite let me bring you up Canaan was the enemy of Israel. Canaan was the place that they lived when they were coming out of Egypt and going into the, the, the quote unquote promised land that was occupied. That was called Canaan. And the Bible says in Genesis that he was cursed because of the, of the demonic activity, because of the, of the perversion of their tribe. He was cursed because they offered sacrifices unto Baal. Cursed because they didn't recognize the holiness of God. Cursed because they didn't recognize the God of all gods. Cursed! Cursed because of their perversions. They laid with each other, male and female. They laid with animals. Cursed! Oh my God, y'all don't want to talk about this part. See, see, I, you don't want to talk about this because it messes up your theology. You want her just to be a nice lady that Jesus uh, helped because she was pressing in. But I want to let you know she knew who she was. See, only the Christians are confused about folk that ain't saved that come to Jesus for help. <laughs> oh, she must be saved because she, uh, she kept praying. She said, pray for me. No, 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 no. She knew who she was. She knew that she had been laying around everywhere. She knew she got high and smoked and, 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 and she knew how she talked every time. She knew what it would take to get a night with her. She knew 
that she didn't have no respect for, for God or for the church. She knew. She knew she had called. She knew. She knew. See, and the problem is, is that because that is a standard you assume, because you want to embrace everybody. Hallelujah. How many know you can embrace everybody, but you better be whispering some salvation stuff in their ear. You can embrace people. But you better be giving up some insight on who he is. He'll bless anybody. That doesn't qualify you. That's why it's sad when the Christians sit back and count up their, their, their place with God. Because he blessed you. Ooh we another blessing. That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't mean anything. But how many know that that's not your prerequisite for his presence and his power? It's not your prerequisite for a relationship with him. This is what's happening in the world today. We've got people that are making, counting their hits on Facebook. They're counting hits on Facebook. Like they're counting real people. We reaching more people on Facebook than we've ever reached in the church. You're a liar. You don't know it. A hit is not a person in the seat. A hit is not someone whose heart is given to God. A hit is not a conversion. A hit is not one on your side. A hit is not. A hit is not a soul. This woman knew. She knew who she was. And she wasn't confused about it. Never one time did she say, I'm a sinner. I'm a kind of light. And she knew what a devil was. Oh, hallelujah. She knew what a devil was. Most of the world don't really recognize the devil. They laugh at you because you talk about the devil. This woman knew what the devil was. She got blessed, but she didn't get saved knew who the devil was and many of the people that you are looking and grinning at every day know who the devil is they know the power that's being operated in this last day see this is not a political fight this is a spiritual fight hallelujah and when you don't understand the spiritual import then that means you off your job because you over here trying to be a politician you over here trying to figure out uh, gross national product who's dealing with Russia but then you know what I want to know who okayed to have abortion legal up to nine months nine months Lisa sent me a picture of the baby in the womb and the what do you call that the, the picture that they take ultrasound 3d babies yawning moving hand on the face one time i think it was over her head i said that's her tt this will be over in a few more months can you imagine having something stuck up in you and pulling out that life down through a medical instrument nine months nine months who who was it that decided that Sexual consent should go down to 12 years old. Sexual consent. See, everybody wants to talk trash, but you don't know what's on the ballots. Who decided that sexual consent, that it could be okay? Because if you're a pedophile, you like that. You like that. Who, who, who we? Who decided that the Bible was lying when it said that transgender and... Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. I see now I ain't in the right room. Who? Who decided? I love, I love homosexuals. I do. I love everybody. I love them. I do. But I ain't going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. And you can't legislate love. You can't legislate that. You know, I, I, I'm not going to tell you. you. Do what you... It's your thing. It's your thing. But don't legislate that. 
Don't, don't have my kids. Don't, don't legislate that. Am I being clear? Because I'm in love. I ain't got no hate. And I sure ain't got no phobia. I ain't scared of nothing. Hallelujah. I think it was one president say, I'm only scared of fear. <laughs> I'm scared to be scared. I'm too far out in the water to be scared. Been walking this thing on water for 30 some years. I'm too out, far out there to be scared. But I want to tell you, you can't legislate that. Where is it that we lost it? Where is it that we messed up? Because you got this woman, but then look at this. You got the disciples walking with him, working with him. Get her away from us. <laughs> Cause she crying after us. That's the church. That's the church. That's the, that's the doorkeepers. That's what's standing guarding people. No wonder a person needs to legislate they love because you can't get it. Here the church, you're supposed to be embracing it. You're supposed to be one that is securing. You're supposed to... The church. The church. One of our colleagues came in and she was homosexual and she said... You know, we have a thing in our church where we don't, we don't uh, take memberships right off the bat. Y'all know what they have to have. What do they have to have? The talk. And that's after about six weeks. We just tell you to keep coming. See if it fits. Any relationship need a fit time. Amen. And so she came and she came up to me for the talk. She said, I want to have my talk. She said, but I would have had it early, but I was scared. I said, Why? Why were you scared? She said, because how I am. I said, what do you mean? You know, because I'm, I'm gay. I said, baby, I've been here with you all this time. She said, but, but you don't judge, though. You don't judge. I said, wait. I said, I'll preach you under one of these chairs on that. I will preach you under one of these chairs because I'm going to preach the Bible. I said, but I'm not going to hurt you. And I'm not going to let anybody else hurt you. I said, I'm going to let nobody else tear you down. I'm going to let nobody else focus on you, preach on you over the pulpit. Do you understand? This is why you've got people that have come against you. You don't do that to... I, I mean, take that back because y'all do it to everybody. Everybody do it to these church folk. Are, and it's so pitiful. I saw a disturbing video. I don't want to see it again. I don't want to see it perpetrated. I don't want to see it passed around in here period we don't do that we don't let the world drag up mess and hurt our people we don't do that we stand and we make comments if you can sign in make a comment say you maniac you idiot why would you do this I'm just being real with y'all today I'm real with you every day but I want you to hear this God is saying bring it up the disciples, no love, no compassion, no mentality that says I have uh, 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 been through this myself or I know what this feels like. Come on, let's talk to her. She should have never had to get to Jesus. Oh, wait, I thank you, Holy Ghost. She should have never had to get to Jesus. Hallelujah. Here they had already cast out devils. They had already been sent out two by two. She should have never had to get to him. She should have got Matthew or Mark should have handled that. Not Mark, but uh, one of the other, Peter, Andrew, should have handled that. Here, lay her, go home, your daughter is healed. See, that's what Jesus wanted to hear. Somebody else that knew how to move in the power. We shouldn't have to be... You know what's a doggone shame? It's a shame that people have to get to me to tell me their problems and their financial difficulties. And a lot of it, I'm going I'm to give Coda some props because a lot of that stuff doesn't come to me because it's being handled out there. Sometimes I don't know nothing about it. The bill's been paid. The car note's been handled. The, amen. The money's been getting. The check's been written. Because that's the way it should be. Why should a hungry woman with four kids have to get to me? to ask for help and you sitting in the pews with her 
How can somebody that hasn't got a, a ride away, how why did they have to get to me and you sitting in the pews with her? See, so that's what the body of Christ needs to do. It's to become so sensitive that they become Jesus in the midst of the people. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to become sensitive of the things that are happening in the midst of the people. Right now, we are launching an all-out all campaign online. We're online. And all of you ministers that are online, we don't need to see what you ate yesterday. We need to see what kind of word you eating today. Come on. We don't, you, you know, and some people will say this, you know, we got a life. We have a life. You, and you do. And it better be hid in Christ. It better be hid in Christ. I'm going to close with this. this. This woman was conscious and knowledgeable of things around her. And the, the spiritual condition. Although she was in a political place. Because she didn't have any business over in that area. Jesus didn't either. But that consciousness that she had, that press, made her come through all of that danger. But listen to this. That we have a life and we want to live our life. You died in Christ. And so you're alive right now. But the life you live is not yours. But it's Christ that lives in you. And so you got to make up your mind. You got to draw a line in the sand that says, this is the way I roll. I, it's him and him alone. And some people will call you fanatical. And some people will call you crazy. But you'll be the ones that they run to right now when these cabinets are getting ready to go bare. And these shelves are getting ready to dry up. Because you can't keep handing out stimulus money and nobody working. You can't keep on handling out stimulus money and there's no crops being grown. Where's the food? You, you know how to understand your calling to understand your assignment to understand what you're supposed to be doing you're supposed to be the one that cast out devils lay hands on the sick and they recover you're supposed to be the one that back up devils off of our young people you're supposed to be the one you're supposed to be the one but I fear I fear that we have gotten blessed and we haven't gotten saved. I fear that we have gotten blessed and we haven't gotten converted. Because we can still do the same old trashy stuff that we did in the world. I, I fear. I fear because we have no sensitivity to the sanctification of God. We squall at sanctification. We laugh at sanctification. Look at her. Oh, fuddy duddy. Look at him. Don't really know. No, uh, he, that ain't cool. He ain't being cool. You're cool if you can twerk like Miley Cyrus or, or Rihanna. You cool if you can put a cigar in your mouth and talk about what, what spirits can come in if you Jay-Z. You're cool if you're full of the world and full of the world's way. You think you're cool because you can pull down some Babylonian worship and you put it in your worship? You're not cool. You're not cool. You're not cool because you can take a worldly song and twist it up and put Jesus in it. You're not cool. God's tired of this two-headed devil. He's sick of this double head dying. He's sick of it. You cool. He's trying to pull the people into eternity. He have responded with divine, with divine internal life for us. Just for your commitment. Just for your commitment. He says, I give you the eternal life. That means the God life. That's his life. But you're so hardened and so caught up in the world that you don't know how to draw the line. You don't know how to represent. Jesus said, I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. I'm in the world, but it's not in me. You can be in it. But it's not in me. It's not in me. It's not in me. It's not in me. God is calling for sanctification today. He's calling for some people with enough backbone to stand for him. With enough backbone to stand for right. 
I'm so glad that I've got that kind of mentality that I think is more important that I bring you into the knowledge of him than I have you liking me. Hallelujah. I think it's more important that I bring you into the place where he becomes preeminent rather than I become popular by the devil. But I love you. And I want to see you come into this fullness because whether you know it or not, because we haven't been preaching it like we should. See, see, you don't even know that God will take the taste out of your mouth. Oh, hallelujah. Do I have any converts in here? Do I have any converts in the house? God will take the taste. You say, well, ain't nothing wrong. You know, I like a little hit every now and then. I ain't doing what I used to do. <laughs> you ain't let him take it out of your mouth. Ah! Ah! He saved, I'm saved. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bump of ground. You haven't let him take the taste. Out of your mouth. Hallelujah. You haven't let him take the taste. Out of your mouth. And some of y'all sitting there with so much hate. And so much anger. And so much disdain. Because you haven't let him take the taste. So much unforgiveness. It's got your body jacked up. It's got your mind messed up. And so you want to chant instead of pray. Because you haven't let him take the taste out of your mouth. You still got to get high. Because you can't come up here and get high. Because you ain't let the taste. I want to confess I'm drunk most of the time. <laughs> I'm high they say when you get older you lose things you don't know where you put them no we ain't got that problem ages and eternal but I'm high let him take the taste out of your mouth he'll do it he'll change you from the inside out Listen, you'll be valuable to the kingdom you'll even be valuable to the world You'll be valuable to the world. Hi, I'm Bishop Glorious Powell, and you're watching The Spirit of Revelation. We'd like to stop and give you an opportunity to sow into this vital outreach. God has blessed us to such a degree to be able to bring you the revelated word of God and powerful guests that come on to share the gospel of the kingdom. We look forward to joining with you in partnership of spreading the good news and the spirit of revelation. Thank you.